In a recent video about current options in the budget anamorphic market, I highlighted the Atlas Mercury 1.5 times full frame lenses as potential winners. Today, I got the three lens demo set with me and we're gonna put them to the test. I had the lenses for two weeks during which I filmed three short scenes and a few more tests, working closely with a variety of folks in the film industry. Here's a quick scene that we filmed with these lenses. It's heavier than I expected. I can imagine. I can imagine carrying it around all day, weighing you down. An hour is more than enough. What do we do with it? Get rid of it. Burn it. Throw it off something. Sounds reasonable. Was that too forward thinking? It's a little bold. That's what I was afraid of. I suppose my only thought now is... What if it comes back for it? And finds it burnt. Or thrown off something. Or just missing, really. Then we'll hold firm and we'll say we fell down to it for too long. It's too much risk. And for too little reward. Good point. You might want to say that at that point. We just like her, you know, to to go missing and then turn up the minute we get rid of it. I wonder. Could it be a test? As in, As in she's testing us not to get rid of it. it. Seems too important to risk on a test we're so close to failing. No, she knows better than to test us. She does. Okay, here's the plan. We hide it. We don't talk about it. We don't ever acknowledge it. We just... We'll bury it or something. And if she comes back for it, then it's ready. If not, it's dead and gone. I'm sorry to hear you say that. Yeah. So hide it. Can't we both do it? It's better if only one of us knows where it is. It's already half lost. Can't you hide it? You're the brave one, not me. Plus, if I knew where I was, I'd just dump it in secret. And it'd be the shit for both of us. Yeah? Sound logic. You wanna count to ten or something? Make it fifty. Seven. Hunt to ten level up, John. This is the right thing to do. Off you go. I'm kind of my head. I'll make the tea. What's so special about these lenses? This is usually a simple question for most products because they have one main selling point. The Mercury's have several. So many, in fact, that I had to break down their possibilities in three videos instead of one. So stay tuned. The first strong selling point that jumps at me is their size. Here's a side-by-side -side of the Orion 40mm and the Mercury 42mm. The difference is astounding. The Orion is more than twice the size and weight of the Mercury, and on top of that, the Orion covers Super 35, while the Mercury delivers an image circle that covers full frame. It's not just the 42 that's impressive in size. All three lenses are super compact and light, with the 72mm being the largest one, at 1.6 kilograms or 3.6 pounds, and 16.2 centimeters in length, that is 6.3 inches in American. As cinema lenses, they come in PL mount, the front diameter is 95mm with no filter threads, so you need a matte box for filtration. And we have matching geared rings for focus and aperture, meaning no sweat when switching lenses. Speaking of aperture, all three lenses open up to T2.2, which is almost a full stop faster than most full frame competitors. And that comes with a trade off when we look at performance. The good part about it is, depending on your style, the trade off just means more character. This might sound silly, but the lenses look really good with the space gray metal housing, plus they have a good feel on your hand. The dampening of the rings is perfect if you're operating by hand and won't give a hard time to any focus motors in the market either. All three lenses share a focus throw of 180 degrees in which the marks are pretty well spread out. Focus comes down to 1.5 feet on the 36mm through a rack in which we can see a lot of breathing. 
the 42 mil comes down to two feet, and the 72 mil brings us to three feet away. On full frame with the 1.5 times squeeze, I almost want the 72 mil to get me closer, but I guess that's the whole point of having a 95 millimeters that's confirmed as a longer telephoto in the set. You can choose if you want your focus scales in metric or in American. As I just said, the Mercuries are 1.5 times anamorphics, which might be triggering to some folks, namely the two times or die crowd. I've been a lot less picky about squeeze these days and the 1.5 times delivers a lot of traits that make life easier in post. When filming on a 16 by nine sensor, you end up with a 2.66 to one aspect ratio. When filming open gate on a three by two sensor, this yields a 2.25 to one aspect ratio, like this video right now. And a four by three sensor will get you a two to one univision aspect ratio all fairly popular and versatile sizes. The biggest sacrifice when choosing a lesser squeeze than two times is bokeh will be less of an oval shape, although we still get pretty nice results here. For market availability, the Mercuries are currently on pre-order stage with a thousand dollar discount per lens compared to the retail price. The retail price will be six thousand dollars per lens while you get them for five grand each if pre-ordering. The deposit for pre-order varies according to when you put your money down. Right now it's at thirteen hundred dollars deposit per lens until the end of March. But check Atlas's website for more accurate numbers. These deposits are also fully refundable. Pre-orders seem to go until the end of June, so I wouldn't expect to see these lenses out and about any time before that. Atlas has been putting out the information that their target delivery date is about a year after the pre-orders have been placed. So let's hope that that timeline moves faster, right? Let's now look at some charts and flares. One thing that surprised me is that even though the lenses have very little chromatic aberration, I found a fairly large area where focus just taps out. For example, when wide open, we have a very clear delineation of the limits of focus. This improves considerably as we stop down, and it's more pronounced on the 36 and 42 than in the 72 mil. Distortion is one of my favorite things about these lenses, with noticeable barrel bowing of lines through all focal lengths to create a strong unifying visual style. Flares are pulling away from the traditional blue with a very well chosen amber tone. These are not too saturated nor too bright, and they really go with the rest of the images that these lenses create. All three lenses show rainbow flares when wide open. But you can control that by closing the iris by about half a stop. The 72 mil has a strong partial vertical flare as well, and that won't go away by stopping down. This and the strong blue secondaries make it stand out from the other two. Last, playing with warmer light sources will impact the color of the flares in noticeable ways. Working with the Mercuries for the short scene in the beginning of this episode, I had a crew of experienced film people. We filmed everything with the lenses wide open to push their limits. Some of the things that we noticed during this process is that the lenses have a very pronounced breathing. So if a scene required constantly racking between characters A and B, the image would be constantly changing sizes in a distracting way. We addressed this by adjusting the positions of the actors so they were always closer to each other's focus distances. The other thing that really stood out was this dead zone in which focus taps out. I showed it on the focus charts, but it's really easy to see it here, as we have focus on a character's shirt, but not on his face. There is a clear cat eye shape that hold focus according to the focus scale. I'll admit that the scenario that we ended up working in was the toughest possible situation for this behavior, as we have two characters on opposite sides of the frame. I'd say the Mercury lenses do a lot better with center framed compositions, much like the anamorphics of old days. Remember when I said earlier that this could be a compromised or perceived as character? It's up to you to choose if this hinders your storytelling or strengthens it. For us, it was tough as we wanted to have focus on the two characters' faces, but we also didn't want a ton of headroom to avoid the dead zone towards the sides and the top. So we ended up with a mix of more headroom on some cases and accepting the dead zone on some others. The other thing we learned about focus is the lenses have a lot of field curvature. For the setup where the box is in the center of the table and one character sits on each side, even though they're all in the same plane in real life, for focus pulling, the box in the center was almost a foot closer than focusing on the actors. 
This is kind of hard to visualize, so I'm adding some drawings here in hopes that they make a little more sense. It's like the focal plane of the box at five feet bowed in towards us, requiring an adjustment in distance to reach the actors. You can definitely use this to create interesting non-flat compositions, but it does take some time to get used to it. In our scene, we constantly kept looking at the bike on the left of frame, which looked super sharp even though it was more than a foot behind the actors. Filming on full frame, we also felt our close-ups were not that close, even though 72mm is far from being a wide lens. Due to the squeeze, we end up with a working 48mm horizontal field of view. We didn't have a diopter tray to get us closer, and I guess it was part of the test. Overall, I feel that the standards for which we are evaluating the Mercury's are higher than the standards of my regular reviews. That's one of the results of having a bunch of film people helping out in the process. So while it might sound like I'm pointing out issues or shortcomings, these are less relevant than the ones I'm used to seeing in other lens makers. After these tests, I believe the Mercury lenses might be the best option in the market right now for their price range, and even considering options at a lower price range. If I had to pick only one instead of a set, I'd probably go for the 42 and work with that one like I've been working with the Orion 40mm. It feels like Atlas is delivering cinema standards and quality with lots of research and personality at a prosumer budget. I'm not saying the lenses are cheap, by all means, 5,000 bucks, it's still a lot of bucks, but I am saying that I'd be inclined to pick these over many other pricier options. I mentioned in the beginning that I have some more Mercury material coming up, so here are the plans. On the coming weeks, I'll have a video using these lenses and my rotated camera body idea for a super cool square aspect ratio and its uses for social media. The other video I'm working on focuses on the differences of using Mercury lenses on Super 35 sensors in comparison to full frame. I'll discuss performance, artifacts, and character with a short scene to help us notice these differences. If those pieces sound interesting to you, make sure to subscribe before you head out, and you'll get an update when these episodes are published. Big thanks to the folks at Atlas Lens Co. for sending me this demonstration set and encouraging these experiments. I hope you learned something cool here today, and I'll see you in the next one. Chitta